Greetings, Mikey Majestic representing Inner Gold International, Bang Radio. It is the Inner Gold Show. And we're here at Strong Roots headquarters right now with reggae royalty. And I can't lie, I feel like a superstar right now. We're here <laughs> once again with Marla B, a.k.a. Marla Brown, the daughter of the legendary Dennis Emmanuel Brown. Greetings, sister. Greetings, my brother. What Everything is nice. Always. It's a blessing once again. You know, we caught up once before <laughs> and we went a bit deep. We looked yeah. at the journey of how you reached where you are today. <laughs> so the main thing really is to focus on the Deliverance EP. <laughs> and before we go any further, I have to big you up on putting that works together. <laughs> oh, you know, good, thanks. It is a good look and it is something that we're supporting every week on Bang Radio and the Inner Gold Show. Thank you so uh, much. The last time we caught up, you was literally about to just go to Jamaica and do some works yeah. at the time. And now you've come back with Deliverance. <laughs> so the main thing I really want to focus on today is the Deliverance project. Mm -hmm. OK, so first and foremostly, Deliverance is a big, big track of your father's. Yeah, Deliverance will come. That's off of the Visions album. Yep, yeah, you know, you know the songs. thing properly, you know, yeah, the whole catalogue. Almost. The there's too much to know on the catalogue, but I know, I know enough. <laughs> well, we did say last time that there's nearly 50 albums. So yeah, it is a lot. Albums. It is a lot to remember. So you chose the name Deliverance. So mm -hmm. why did you choose that name? Um, well, first for me, it was I wanted to present myself to the world, not just as Marla Brown, the artist, but Marla Brown herself. And I wanted to showcase my thought process and ways that I can liberate people through positive vibes and upfulness. And for me, the music that I've presented and I've delivered, <laughs> I feel it's very poignant in our life and our generation. And secondly, it's, of course, my coming into the musical world. So it's a deliverance of my father's offspring, you know, to present what my dad's taught me and what I've learned being here on earth in this society. And thirdly, it's my favourite song on the album. So it's only right. It's a perfect fitting for where I am and where I want, the, want to go consciously and, you know, globally as well. Now, the first thing that the people see is the artwork, and I have to say I like it, especially as youths, we grow up around vinyl, yeah. and you have a lot of vinyl around you, in there. Yeah. So what was the concept you were trying to go for with the album or the EP cover? For me, it always comes back to the foundation, somewhat like Genesis in the Bible. Yeah. Um, for us, like you said, our beginnings and our introduction to music was on vinyl, so that was a deliverance it was a come up of, of that you know just that being from vinyl the artist the the foundational artist for us and our generation just to present myself coming up from that so it's the foundation of your father and all the other legends yeah. that you're standing on I was actually your, lying down. Yeah, the camera was like this. <laughs> in a meta, in a metaphorical, <laughs> metaphorical sense, way. Yeah. yeah. Because obviously the elders give us the strength, you yeah. know? Yeah, and the knowledge. Definitely. And the power. Now, I was saying to you off camera that, you know, you've reached as high, high as number five in the yeah. iTunes chart, you yeah. know. That's I a know. good look and Thank you should you. be very proud. Honestly, now, I was... How does it feel to have hit that milestone? I was overwhelmed. I, it, it was a joy because... I was very worried on how people were going to interpret my music or accept it or even want to listen to it. Because it's a new journey for me, it was important for me to deliver good content, you know. And the fact that everyone embraced it within two hours, you know, that's why it got to number five. I was truly shocked but happy that people had accepted what I had to offer. So it was exciting to see the next steps from that. Now, you mentioned that Deliverance was on the Visions album. Yeah. And obviously, for you to make the EP, you must have had your own vision. So what was your vision that you were trying to get across when putting the EP together? Just presenting myself in a very authentic, genuine way. It's always been my vision to be true to who I am and to really deliver love. You know, I come from a family that's very lovable. And I live in love, so it was important for me to communicate that to the masses. So that was solely my vision. And music, for us all, is love, you know. No matter what you're going through in life, we always come back to the music to make us feel better or 
you know, just to guide us, somewhat guide us. And for me, music is therapy, and mm. that was my outlet. So it was just to embrace the world through my music and to have that, build that relationship. So now the EP's out, it's doing very well at the moment. Yeah. Do you feel that you fulfilled the vision that you set out with at the beginning? Um, my first, in, my first in initial vision, yes, because it was important for me to present myself um, to the world. And as Dad's child, it's important for people to acknowledge who you are. Minus the fact that I'm Dad's child, they also want to see... What do you have to offer them? Are you anything like your dad? Have you learned a lot from your dad? So I do feel very much fulfilled because I've been able to present that and fulfill it. Um, so, yeah, I do. <laughs> so it's kind of like, because we had a similar conversation with even Christopher Ellis mm -hmm. of kind of representing your father's legacy, yeah. but kind of having a presenting bit of you in own. there as yeah, well. My dad was very big on, you know, being unique and being true to who you were. And it was important for me as well to take that information that I've learned and I've grown upon to execute that in the same way as my dad done, but be true to my likes and my loves. And, you know, the love that my dad has for music and the love my dad has for people, I embedded that, I, I've embedded that in my work and in my existence. So um, no matter what I do, I'm always going to be my father's child and I'll always be somewhat similar to my dad you know minus the looks I have the smile you know um but I have the content um but I've still got a lot more to learn you know my dad has a history of knowledge and you know I'm on that journey to fulfill that too oh so you've made a good start so far Thank trust you. me <laughs> now you was in Jamaica and, you know, we saw from Instagram and that you was getting a lot of love out there. Yeah. How does it feel that your music is received so well in the land where your father's from? It's a joy. It's a complete joy. Um, Jamaica, they're very honest people. And it's important for you to be accepted in a way that they love. And you have to present quality to them. And the fact that everyone embraced me so lovingly so genuinely and it was hope for them you know they want they all miss my dad we all miss my dad and it was important for them to fill that void that they have for my dad through me so it was it was just a joy honestly for anyone that I communicated with and they'd give me a story about what dad did for them and seeing me again it brings back all those great memories and that's what we live on great memories so everyone's fulfilled for this this project isn't for me alone, it's for all of us. <laughs> well, you know, when we're sharing it with the people, the feedback we've been getting from the radio is very good. So oh, great. Yeah, you've yeah. definitely, you know, hit targets Thank with you. that one. You've done very well. And talking of Jamaica, you recorded the EP between Jamaica and here. And here, yeah. What was it like, firstly, when I was looking on the EP and I saw that you recorded at Tough Gong, I was like, wow. Yeah. Yeah. So what was it like recording in such an um, iconic, historic place? It's very authentic because you get a different vibration in different studios. And I, I guess it's the energy that people leave behind that are in those studios. So I actually recorded also at Penthouse. So there's a lot of great artists that record there. So it's always a different energy and it's a different strength. And you, you get to express something so different in each studio and... Yeah, it's just a vibe, different vibes, but it's always a great vibe. And is there a difference, like, between recording in Jamaica and in the UK? Like, do you feel you're able to focus more on the music in Jamaica? You get more of the roots and the culture. You get a different meditation when you're in Jamaica. And I guess it's because in London, we're so, we're so busy and we're so focused on time, we don't have the, the space to really... Be creative, you know, unless we take ourselves in a really small place where we can be alone with ourselves. But in Jamaica, it's just a complete different energy and you have time, you know. They don't acknowledge time as much as we do here. It's true. <laughs> it's true. It's very true. So, yeah, definitely. It's just time and energy is just beautiful out there. I love it. 
Can't wait to come back. <laughs> <laughs> You're making me want to book a ticket as come well. With, trust come with, come with. <laughs> so we have to sort something out. Yeah, man. So let's talk about the producers on the album. Mm-hmm. Like, who are some of the producers that feature on the EP? Um, We have, from the top, we have Royal Order Music and Greenstone Music, uh, based out of California. Yeah. Then we have Tony Kelly, who's from Jamaica. Um, he's Dave Kelly's brother. That's the superstar. We have Thilo Tekka Jax. He's based in Germany. We have Asher D, who's based in France. So it's a global thing. And we have Dan Grossman from Dynasty slash Loud Music, Loud City Music, sorry. Um, so yeah, it's just a different vibration from different producer that I've worked with on the AP. No, well, that's one thing that I like about the EP is that each tune has a vibe on yeah. it, but each tune has a slightly different yeah. sound as well. So that's very good. But let's talk about some of the collabs. Mm-hmm. Now, we had the privilege of interviewing Kobaka when he oh, was yeah. in the UK and we nice. warmed up for him at Electric. Mm-hmm. And when we interviewed him, he spoke very highly of you, you Aww, know, a lot it. of love for you. <laughs> So yeah, what was him. it like hooking up and working with Kabaka on the project? Great. I actually met him uh, last year at my dad's tribute show, the Jerry Earl tribute show that they have annually for dad. And we just kept the connection from there and Abby, big up Abby. <laughs> um, but it's literally just natural, you know, we kept the link and then I was recording Hunt You Down and I just called him. I said, I've got a tune I can hear you on. Do you want to come down? He came down within 10 minutes and came down, knocked that song out within 10 minutes. Accurate, song as was you done. Would say, Yeah, accurate. he just listened, vibed, freestyled, done. Amazing. I could learn a lot from him, trust me. Amazing artist. So when you collab with the artist, you get to learn and see their oh, process sure, and yeah. pick up things from them. He's a professional when it comes to content, lyrical content, and just a vibe, his energy. He delivers such authenticity. It... It's truly admirable. It's true. Now, when we interviewed Protégé, he mentioned the artist to us and he said, look out for this artist, he's going to do big things. Uh-huh. And he goes by the name of Runkus, <laughs> you know, yeah. and you was lucky enough to have him yeah. on the EP as well. Mm-hmm. And it is a track that we fully support and oh, play thanks. on the Inner Gold show. So mm-hmm. why choose Runkus for the EP? Runkus, again, he gives a great energy and... His mindset is so on point, you know. Um, you know, it, it's just a vibe. You know, when you're listening to a rhythm and because I'm a dancer, I, I'm i very expressive um, and creative in the sense where I can almost hear certain voices. And I think with one shot, because of the content of that song, um, where Ronkus is so focused on and righteousness, yeah. It was only right to have him on this song to deliver that content on the track. Perfect fit. I love him. You're gonna, he's got some great works coming out. And that leads me to the next question in the sense that Protégé spoke very highly of him. Mm-hmm. When we play his music, we get a lot of love. Yeah. So we expect big things. But, yeah, you man. know, what do you think he's capable of achieving in the music? Only greatness. You know, he's speaking something of truth. Um, power and motivation and it's something that we need to hear especially in this day and age there's so much corruption going on and we all want change and we can only make that change through unity and in order for us to come together and really deliver great content he's he is a poignant person to do just that and he's young as well not in a negative sense but in the fact that he's growing in what's going on today so he's able to expressively let the world know how can we make things better? You know, he's a positive view, positive, positive view. And his energy and his vibration is just, you just, you'll get, you'll get that, that connection with him once you hear more content from him and you'll see where he's, he'll be going and he's going up. So yeah. he's definitely yeah, got the Marla Brown yeah. coast. Oh yeah, for sure. He's actually on the road now with Kamani Mali. Okay. So he's, He's got a good wing under him, you know? Yeah, man. So he's learning from the best, really. Yeah, only right. <laughs> now, there's a track on the EP as well called Mama Earth. Yes. But think talking of the Earth side of it, you know, mm. you've done very well recently. It's been the year of Marla Brown. You've been <laughs> very successful so far. So how do you stay grounded following your recent success? I read my scriptures every day, you know, and because of my upbringing, 
with my brothers and my sisters and my parents, it's always good to stay humble and stay focused and stay relevant, you know, keep continue reading, know what's going on in the world and draw yourself away from negative energy. I'm always I've always been about vibrations. Um, I think that's why I went straight into dancing because it was an expression and you know, I like I love positive vibes. Um, so for me anyway, I live in love, you know, um and great words, great power, great energy that keeps me grounded and, and focused. And talking of the mama side of the title, how much does mum mean to you? Oh gosh, the world. <laughs> <laughs> literally it's actually because moving to Jamaica it's actually the first time I've really kind of spreaded my wings and left the nest and I've only ever even when my dad was on tour and on the road it's always me and my mum even though I've got my brothers and my sisters I'm the youngest so I'm very close to my mum and my dad um but when I'm away I feel like I have to call her every second to let her know what I'm doing where I'm going who I'm going to be with so I do have withdrawals, but, you know, I'm growing, I'm getting older and, you know, you have to kind of step away and live your own life. But there's nothing I do, especially musically, because my mum did a lot of music with my dad. So it's it's important that I get the thumbs up from her in all that I do. So my mum's a very key figure and role model in my life for this journey. We got mama eats and every yes, time. one special. <laughs> no. There's another track, one of my personal favourite tracks is Superstar. Yeah. And it seems like it's a celebration of the self. Yeah, man. And I said to you before, my line is, know Know who you are. It's better coming from you. So what was the line I told you? Know who you are. It's important for us. We get lost. Sometimes it's because there's so many distractions, we forget who we are. We forget our sense of belonging. And it's important for us to remember that we're all unique beings and we all have something different to present to the world and to each other because we learn from each other. And it's important to celebrate that. And once you do that, you can continue flying. And Superstar, is, is it, it's not about being a celebrity or being popular. It's a celebration of self. I see it as us being royal superstars. We're all royal. We're all uniquely made. Um, so yeah, just identify who you are, know your purpose and strive. <laughs> Powerful words. <laughs> now we can't forget the track as well, Better Days, which is produced by Royal mm. Order Music. And it seems like a declaration that no matter what challenges you face in life, mm-hmm. you won't face it alone. So yeah. I thought, let me ask Marla, tell us about a challenge you face musically yourself and how you've overcome that challenge be it alone or with the Mm -hmm. help of others um i'd say it was finding my voice finding my sound people always wanted me to interpret my dad even though i'm a female they wanted me to you know have my little dad's hey the little the little key little phrases that he has or the way he sings and how he delivers it it was a it was a challenge for me to show that I have a voice and it's something that I want people to hear and for you to accept it. You know, acceptance is always the hardest hurdle for people. But once I accepted my own voice and my own talents and my own delivery, um, everyone else can. So, yeah, acceptance was the hurdle. (laughs) For real. This is very deep and very powerful. Now, I'm going to put you on the spot a little bit and ask you to think a little bit. Me, personally, I tried to do it myself and tried to find a favourite track on the EP, but I, personally, I can't do it. Because <laughs> each time I listen to it, yeah. I find another track that I like Same more. Same me. So, uh, as it stands right now, this second in time, what is your favourite track on the EP? It would have to be Superstar because it's... It was about me when I wrote it. Being away from home in London, I found it quite hard to adapt to the lifestyle in Jamaica. Um, And, you know, you come across certain rules and sheep and it's important to kind of stare away and be aware of who you should really connect with and vibe with and who's going to use you and who's not going to use you. And I was somewhat vulnerable being in Jamaica in the early stages. Um, And... 
because of my emotions and being away from home and my sisters, because we're all very, very close, um, my mum said, put it in a song how you feel. And that's what I did, you know. I had to acknowledge who I was, my purpose, and celebrate that. And that kept me smiling. And, yeah, Superstar was just a natural vibe for me. And every time I hear it, it, it still warms my heart. And I love singing every day, so <laughs> that's my favourite song. Well, I think the visuals for Superstar are very powerful. Thank you. Same as Better Day. So can we expect any more visuals from the EP? Oh, for sure. We're actually shooting them in January. Um, my director's called Dennis Brown. Wow. <laughs> Dennis Brown Films. So Dennis Brown Films, um, he is amazing. He has an eye for accuracy. And the quality that he produces is just phenomenal. So um, we're going to be working on some pretty much every song on the EP. Um, and some acoustics we'll be doing in the new year. So, yeah, man, look forward to that. I'm really looking forward to those. And also this year, you've just done everything that you can fit <laughs> into a calendar year, including some big shows like yeah. at the O2. You've been putting in the work. Now, one that sticks out to me that I've seen through social media mm -hmm. is New Mexico. Yeah. So could you share that experience <laughs> with her? I can see yeah. from your face that it was the place to it be. Was so really could good. you share with the people what it was like? It was amazing because we wanted to take the EP somewhere different, you know, to launch. And New Mexico is actually a hippie town. Wow, and hippies I never knew that. yeah, hippies actually love rastas and they love reggae. So it was important to kind of expand the horizon and really celebrate the music um, with another area of the world. And, you know, it was amazing. The turnout was great. There was posters everywhere around the town. Um, there's Native Americans there also and uh, um, a few hillbillies. <laughs> so, um, but it was literally just a joy, you know. It was a new territory for me. And, you know, it's because I've left dance to now do music, it was nice to see a different part of the world, you know, um, with my creative side. So, yeah, it was just amazing and it was a joy and everyone had fun and the radios were blasting the EP every day before I got there. It was just amazing, truly, truly amazing. And you've also been building your own band with some eyes that are known to us, like Brazil. Yeah. You've got Carl in there yeah. and you've got Barry, Barry Dredd. Dredd. So what's it like now having the Marla Brown band as well? It's great. It's all coming It's all coming together so naturally. And, you know, we're all on the same vibe and we all see the vision. It's always about the vision and having the, the right people taking that journey with you. And because I am in the early stages of doing music, it's important to be with people that have your heart and have your best intentions at heart and yeah it's just it's just a great you know everyone's great in their own field so bringing that all together again because my dance company's un unity yeah. it's always <clears throat> going to be that you know united we stand so yeah man it's a joy so you can share the better days with them as they yeah, come man, as they, well they have been we have <laughs> we've had a few shows this year um where we've performed a full set you know, live band and everything. So, um, yeah, man, everyone just, everyone's just loving the works and that we're loving building and creating and performing it, you know, because that's what we're here to do. Now, we've mentioned in the last interview and this interview that your dad has over 50 albums, <laughs> which is amazing, which man a man these days, it will be hard for yeah. certain man to hit their milestones. So talking of albums, is there a Marla Brown album in the pipeline? There will be. At this moment, I'm enjoying creating. And because I am finding myself on this journey, new works are coming, new collaborations are coming, and you'll get to a point where the time is right to deliver an album. Um, it definitely will come, but we've got so much great works. I don't know what songs could put on the album because there'd be too many. <laughs> So you're in a good place where you've got <laughs> We're that, in a really, you've got really good that place. choice to even yeah. think like that. But I think it's all about the timing and at the same time, people are, it's only been a year, so people are still getting to know who I am and um, hear my music. You know, there's still people that haven't even heard Better Days and that was out since April. So it's really nice to make these relationships with people all over the world um, and just continue building. And then when the time's right and, you know, it all comes together nicely, it will be great. <laughs>
No, the, like I said before, this year has been a great year for you. You've done a Very. lot. You've it's a achieved blessed year, a lot. Honestly. So, looking at 2016, what can we look forward to from you in yeah. 2016? And um, well, right now we're actually putting the Europe and US tour together, so we will be delivering deliverance um, to different continents. Um, we'll be dropping some new videos also. Um, also some acoustics and some random collabs where people will think nothing's going on but we're gonna be it's gonna be very very busy um, there's so much going on and there's a lot of uh, love for it and for me and for my dad you know um, it's important that I continue to promote my dad because again this journey isn't for me it's for all of us and it's it's about my dad's name and his legacy and it's it's important for me to keep it consistent and keep it in a beautiful light so that light will only travel greatly every month and yeah man it's going to be a busy busy one oh well, we look forward to it and you know we look forward to catching up with you again and yeah, you know sure. the music's growing we see the personal growth as well Thank so you. only bigger and better things can come mm -hmm. i mean i'm lucky <laughs> i've got the the works in my itunes yeah. library you know which i do play a lot but for those that are yet to hear the works mm -hmm. can you tell the people why they need deliverance in their collection because i think deliverance for me anyway each song represents a different part of life and our consciousness and it's important for us to really channel that and acknowledge it and it's all I'm a positive person and I'm always happy so <laughs> true. I think this will bring joy to people's lives and I think especially because there's so much chaos going on in the world we need to smile you know and we need to feel loved and with music we're able to to have that in in our lives you know we can embrace that and you know eat, again each song is a different vibe and you know it it's just nice to have something to make you groove you know and to make you think and be aware and want to act you know not so much protest but just to channel your thoughts and see a new light you know we can't always focus on the negativity of life and this project in itself for me is very upful um and it's great vibes and i think that's what people need and so far you know people have accepted it and it can only go up from here um if anyone's unsure and they can always check the socials um for the to stream the music's on SoundCloud, my SoundCloud's Marlaby Music, and my Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube is it's Marlaby. So if you want to check those out, you can. <laughs> but you know, it's just a joy. You know, I think that's what we need, um, and overstanding. And well, I think that's what this project delivers. Well, you've definitely done that with this project. And it has been a joy to link up with you once Always. again and to talk about this project. But I think it's only right we can't let you go before you share some of the works and some of the vibes with the people. I know sure. you brought man like Brazil. Brazil, yeah, my you. brother. So we're gonna get into the acoustic session sure. part of things. And once again, Marla, <laughs> it's a joy Good and a thanks. blessing each and every time. Always, always. <laughs>